Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Australian Institute of Physics Theoretical Physics Seminar Series for 2021. I'm David Tilbrook from the Department of Fundamental and Theoretical Physics at ANU, and I'm hosting this series of seminars on behalf of the AIP Theoretical Physics Group. I'd like to start, as usual, by acknowledging the people of the Ngunnawal Nation, the traditional custodians of the lands upon which we are located here at ANU, and we would like to pay our respects to their leaders, past, present and emerging. And of course, we also recognise the traditional custodians of lands all around Australia. Uh, this series of talks has been arranged by the organising committee, chaired by Professor Murray Batchelor, who have identified interesting topics in theoretical physics and related areas and excellent speakers to talk about these topics. If you'd like to join the theoretical physics group, you are, of course, uh, very welcome to do so. It's free to all members of the Australian Institute of Physics. And to do that, just log into the membership portal on your AIP website and you'll see the theoretical physics group name under topical groups in your membership profile and you can, you can join there. Previous seminars in this series have covered a range of very diverse topics from uh, including, for example, talk by Professor Tracy Slatcher on dark matter, Raymond, uh, Professor Raymond Volkus uh, presented a seminar on the Fermilab G-2 experiment. We've had seminars on quantum stochastic resonance by Professor Susan Coppersmith, the thermodynamics of clocks by Professor Gerard Milburn, PT symmetry by Professor Carl Bender, and a fascinating proposal uh, for an experiment to explore some of the quantum properties of gravity by Professor Sagado Bose from University College London. Most recently, we heard from Dr. Matthew Woolley from the University of New South Wales on the very interesting topic of quantum measurement and control of macroscopic oscillators. Uh, all of these seminars have been exceptional, and if you miss them, we'd like to watch them again. They're available uh, to watch on the AIP YouTube channel. Uh, I believe Murray included a link to the YouTube channel in his invitation email to this talk. Uh, as is probably well known to everyone in this audience, superconducting devices provide a, uh, a very rich platform upon which to test and to apply many of the ideas and predictions of quantum mechanics because the dynamics of superconducting uh, devices uh, like Bose-Einstein condensates, for example, are determined by their associated macroscopic wave functions. The control frequencies for these devices, Rabi frequencies and so forth, are in a microwave region and it's possible to operate these devices, if necessary, in the ultra-strong and in the so-called deep-strong coupling regimes. Also, from an experimental point of view, these devices are relatively easy to fabricate using standard lithography. Although, of course, experimentalists are always pushing those things to the limits. Recently, the uh, recognition that it's possible in superconducting devices to explore and possibly to apply some of the physics associated with some aspects of quantum mechanics, including such things as Berry phase, uh, the presence of exceptional points, Dirac cones, conical intersections, and so forth, has led to a very important emerging area of research that we will hear about today particularly in the context of the development of quantum engineered devices. And it's, a, as I said, very interesting and very rich area of research from a, purely from a fundamental, from a theoretical point of view. Today's speaker will, uh, is going to talk, tell us a lot more about this, Dr. Waijan Chen from, University, uh, from Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. Dr. Chen has been working in this area um, uh, for some time. He has published uh, papers dealing with non-humission dynamics of superconducting devices, uh, issues such as adiabacity and non-humission dynamics, the properties of systems near exceptional points in the energy landscape, and on the properties of subsystems when the device parameters are varied in the neighborhood of exceptional points. So here to tell us a lot more about this very important and emerging field of research is Dr. Waijan Chen with his talk entitled Dynamical control of non hermitian superconducting of a non hermitian superconducting qubit. Thanks, Wajan. Over to you. Okay. Let me share my screen.
thanks for the kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my honor to be here today and to present our recent work on non harmonic physics and the exception points uh, based on a superconducting circuit. Uh, in the elementary uh, quantum mechanics class, uh, we learned that a closed quantum system like this atom can be described by a uh, wave function. Its evolution is unitary and uh, guarded by Schrodinger equation. However, in real world, a quantum system interacts with uh, its environment and exchange energy, exchange energy or uh, information such as uh, through this photon emission, uh, making it an open system. So from both fundamental physics and practical as, uh, applications, it's very important to study and understand uh, open quantum systems. Accordingly, the treatment is changed from the Schrodinger equation to master equation, and the system is uh, represented by density operators. Our interesting journey to the non-harmonic physics starts right with this uh, dissipative two-layer system. And uh, of course, uh, with our uh, control knob, um, coherent drive that couples the two empty levers at the red J. Here is the Linda blood mass equation for this uh, dissipative two level system. Uh, rule reference the density operator, as you see, is the coupling Hamiltonian determined by the drive. And LE is a jump operator uh, describing the spontaneous emission from the excited state to the ground state at the red gamma E. Now let's look into more details of the dissipation part. It actually contains two effects. So why is the non hermitian effect uh, corresponding to a non-unitary and uh, coherent evolution? And the other one is quantum jumps that gives a uh, photon emission. So we can rearrange uh, this Linda blood equation, then a non hermitian Hamiltonian appears uh, given by this two by two matrix. So the solution of the Linda blood equation can be viewed as a uh, many possible quantum trajectories. So each of the trajectory uh, can be viewed as average of many possible traject uh, quantum trajectories. So each trajectory is composed of uh, continuous coherent non hermitian evolution and the discrete uh, randomly happened quantum jumps. So this is one uh, possible uh, trajectory of the excited state population. So first the non hermitian evolution and uh, then a jump that brings the uh, qubit to the ground state, then non hermitian evolution, and uh, uh, followed by a second quantum jumps, uh, so forth and so on. So, by averaging uh, many uh, possible trajectories, uh, we obtain the solution of the Linda blood equation, so where the excited state uh, evolves to a steady state on the coherent drive. And imagine that we have uh, the capability to monitor every uh, quantum jumps by using a four pi uh, photon detectors surrounding the qubit. Then we can post select the qubit dynamics uh, without uh, any photon detection event and eliminate this uh, quantum jump term. So compared to the full uh, Linda blooding uh, dynamics, uh, the no jump evolution determined by this uh, non Hermitian Hamiltonian is significantly different. This effective Hamiltonian has been extensively studied uh, in many different uh, platforms uh, from uh, optics, uh, electric circuits, acoustics, uh, atomic ensembles uh, in the past two decades. So among all these studies, two features of the Hamiltonian attract most of the attention. So the first is related with uh, parity time symmetry. So in the original formulation of quantum mechanics, uh, we work on the Hermitian Hamiltonians. So this hermeticity guarantees a real uh, spectrum and a unitary time evolution. And in contrast, for the non hermitian Hamiltonians, they in general only have complex eigenvalues. But there exists a special group of non hermitian Hamiltonians that satisfies the parity time symmetry condition, that is, uh, the, Hamiltonian, uh, the Hamiltonians commute with the combinations of parity and the time reversal operations. Then they can have entirely real uh, eigenvalues and pseudo unitary evolution. And for this uh, effective non Hermitian Hamiltonian, we can separate a trivial part. Uh, this can be viewed as a, a overall background loss. And the remaining Hamiltonian can satisfy the condition of full parity time symmetry. So the full Hamiltonian, sometimes also termed as a passive, time, passive parity time symmetry. 
So in this uh, PT symmetric Hamiltonian, the diag diagonal elements uh, with positive and the negative uh, ima imaginary part uh, denote the two energy levels have gain or loss. And this off diagonal elements uh, de describes their coupling. Uh, I want to use this illustration to provide an intuitive understanding. So the blue elements have a loss and the a red one have, uh, has equal amount of gain. So after a time reversal operation, the gain element, element becomes the one with loss, and the loss element becomes the one with uh, the gain. And then after the parity uh, operation, the two elements will switch their positions. So therefore, after the operation of parity time symmetry, the system remains invariant compared to their initial state. So when the two coupling between uh, when the coupling between the two elements uh, is strong enough, uh, the energy from in the gain element can uh, rapidly flow into the lossy one and uh, compensate its energy loss. Therefore, the whole system behaves like a Hermitian system and exhibits real eigenvalues. The second feature associated with the, this uh, non-Hermitian Hamiltonian is the uh, non-Hermitian degeneracy also known as an uh, exception point. By uh, some simple uh, linear algebra calculation, we can obtain the uh, eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. These are the plots of the real and the imaginary parts of the eigenvalues versus the trial amplitudes. So there exists the transition point at j equal to gamma u or 4, that is uh, the exception point, where the two eigenvalues are degenerate. The exception point separate, uh, uh, separates two parameter regimes. So above the exception point, uh, the two eigenvalues uh, have, the, uh, have the same uh, imaginary part, but opposite real part, uh, called unbroken regime. While below the uh, exception point, uh, the eigenvalues is uh, purely uh, imaginary, uh, call, called a uh, broken regime. So when the two eigenvalues are degenerate, accordingly the two eigenstates, uh, degenerate too. Uh, this is uh, one unique property of the uh, non-Hermitian degeneracy, because uh, since uh, for a Hermitian system, its degeneracy only means the eigenvalues are degenerate, but the eigenstates are still orthogonal. To observe this unique physics associated with uh, non-Hermitian Hamiltonian from a dissipative two-level system, one needs to monitor every quantum jump event. So this is a, which is a highly challenging task uh, in experiments. So in our study, we came up with a, an alternative strategy by moving the qubit manifold to the upper energy levels E and F. And the max the dissipation rate of the F state, gamma F, uh, is much, much smaller than the dissipation rate of the excited state, gamma E. Then quantum jumps from the excited state will bring the system to the ground state. That, that means uh, the ground state uh, acts as the rule of a photon detector. Then by post select the uh, evolution in the ENF submanifold, we can realize no jump evolution and obtain a non hermitian qubit. Our experimental setup uses a circuit QED configuration, where a transmount superconducting circuit is placed inside a three-dimensional microwave cavity. Their dispersive interaction allows us to obtain a high-fidelity single-shot readout of the transmount state. Uh, by sending a weak probe uh, to the microwave, microwave cavity and uh, detect its uh, phase shift, uh, we, can, yeah, we can read out the high-fidelity readout. So in the experiments, we use the uh, lowest three energy levels, uh, GEF, of the transma and the transition frequencies and the carriage resonance are listed here. Uh, next, we introduce an impedance uh, mismatching element connected to the circuit QED configuration and, uh, and uh, engineer the density of the states of the electromagnetic field near the GE transition. That is, uh, we create highly non-uniform density of states. The transform used in this experiment has a pair of Joshman junction in squid loop by adjusting the 
magnetic flux through the uh, squid, we can tune the GE transition frequency and subsequently tune the dissipation rate of the excited state. Therefore, we realize the condition that uh, the dissipation rate of excited state is much, much larger than the dissipation of the F state. In the experiment, we initialize the transmon state in the EF submanifold. And during the experiments, if the readout if the readout result is in uh, in is excited state or F state, we keep the result. But if the state readout is the ground state, we will discuss the result. So this post-selection method allows us to eliminate the quantum jumps and realize uh, this uh, non-Hamiltonian Hamiltonian. So with this setup, uh, we first aim to observe the exception point. So we prepare the transmer at the F state and then apply a resonant microwave drive for two microseconds, followed by a readout pulse. The left figure shows the uh, error population evolution at the different dry amplitudes here. Uh, two examples are showing on the right side. Uh, so their dynamics, these dynamics are determined by the uh, eigenvalue difference between uh, uh, of the of the effective non-harmonic tuning. For the strong drive, for the large JKS, uh, the eigenvalue difference is a real number and it determines the frequency of the energy swap uh, between the two levels. So this corresponds to the part time symmetry on broken regime. But for the weak drive test, uh, the eigenvalue difference is a purely imaginary number. And we observe uh, uh, an exponential uh, decay evolution. So these evolutions are fitted by a decaying sine wave and uh, we observe a transition of the oscillating frequencies. And this transition point indicates the occurrence of uh, an exception point. At the exception point, the eigenstates are degenerate too. So to locate the eigenstates, uh, we, prepare the, we prepare different initial states given by the polar angle theta and the azimuth angle uh, phi on the block sphere. And then apply a resonant microwave drive uh, for a few hundred nanoseconds and followed by a, a state readout. And then we calculate the F state population difference between, before and after this microwave drive. Uh, for an eigenstate, since it is stationary, the population difference before and after this micro, microwave drive uh, should be close to zero. So in the broken regime, the eigenstates uh, are located on the YZ plane of the block sphere, and therefore can be located by sweeping, uh, by sweeping the qubit preparation at different uh, theta values. So this figure shows uh, the F state population difference at the varied J values. So for each J, we by sweeping the theta preparation, we can observe two white areas corresponding to no population change and the position of the eigenstates. This black dashed curve is a is a theoretical result calculated from the effective non-harmonic tuning, matching well with our experimental observation. And in the unbroken region, the eigenstates are located on the xy plane of the block sphere. So therefore can be uh, located by sweeping the uh, qubit preparation at a different uh, azimuth angle phi. And at the exception point, the two eigenstates will be degenerate at the, uh, at the plus y state on the block sphere. Uh, this figure plus the uh, overlap between the two eigenstates at the different J values. Near the exception point, the eigenstates are highly non-orthogonal. Therefore, the overlap uh, is close to one. Okay, so far we only discussed the physics at the different J values. And we, with an exception point, uh, observed at uh, uh, gamma E over four. So by extending the J values to the negative 
axis, uh, which in experiments just mean uh, we add a pi phase change to the to the microwave drive, and we could obtain uh, another exception point at the negative uh, JEP. And then if we detuning our if we detune our microwave drive frequency fr from the EF transition frequency, we ob we can obtain another control knob. Uh, this is frequency detuning delta, and subsequently subsequently this two dimensional parameter space. These two plots show the real and imaginary parts of the complex eigenvalues uh, on this two dimensional parameter space. Uh, each of them is formed by uh, two uh, intersecting Riemann sheets. Uh, the imaginary parts uh, quantifies uh, the losses of the eigenstates. So here the surface with a red color means uh, less loss, and the surface, mean, uh, the surface with blue color uh, means uh, more loss. Uh, this interesting Riemann structure provides a new control method uh, if, by encircling the exception point. Uh, for example, if we uh, choose uh, an eigenstate on the uh, lower surface, and then tune the system parameters to encircle the exception point, and after one full encirclement, uh, the system ends up with the other eigenstate on the upper surface. So this model switch behavior has been uh, observed in, uh, in classical systems, such as uh, optical well guides and the opto optomechanical setup. And we verify this uh, state transfer protocol in our experiments. And the parameter pass uh, is determined by, uh, by the maximum and the minima uh, J values, uh, the J max and J min, and also the maximum frequency detuning delta zero. The starting position at J max uh, is far from the exception point. And so, therefore, the two eigenstates are, can be approximated by uh, plus and minus x. So, in our experiment, we choose the initial state minus x and the uh, counterclockwise encircling direction. And the loop time uh, is about one is, is one point five microsecond. To observe the state transfer, we divide the time evolution uh, into sequentially. Uh, longer steps between 0 and 1.5 microsecond, and uh, pausing the evolution at uh, uh, each step, and uh, perform a uh, state tomography to determine the uh, poly expectation values x, y, z. So in this figure, uh, the solid curves are from uh, experiments, and the dashed curves are the theoretical results of the instantaneous eigenstate of the Hamiltonian along the parameter path. So this uh, this uh, tomography, this experimental tomography results roughly uh, follow the instantaneous eigenstates. So after a complete encirclement, the qubit is transferred from the initial state minus x uh, to a final state uh, close to uh, plus x. In addition, since the uh, the the primitive loop time is finite, uh, it also induces uh, non-adiabatic non coupling between the two eigenstates, especially at one half of the uh, encirclement, uh, where the eigenvalue difference is very small. So this non-adiabatic effect leads to small oscillation for the poly expectation values. And, and this oscillation frequency uh, is determined by the eigenvalue difference. For clarity, I also plot uh, the theoretical results on the Riemann surface. Uh, which also qualitatively uh, reveals that the qubit state is transferred along the Riemann surface. One may expect this, this behavior, this model switch, uh, this state transfer behavior uh, holds if we change the encircling direction to clockwise, clockwise direction. However, for this encircling direction, uh, the quantum state uh, significantly deviates from the instantaneous eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, and uh, therefore do not follow the Riemann structure. Uh, the qubit state ends up with a, a highly mixed uh, state, so which can be attributed to uh, several reasons. For example, the non-adiabatic coupling, uh, non-formation gain loss effect, 
uh, and uh, some other sorts of dissipations. We can use this uh, Riemann surface to have a better understanding uh, of this observation. Uh, along the parameter path, uh, the initial selected eigenstate on the blue color surface experience more loss. And the value gain, the value gain of the other eigenstate on the red surface uh, will amplify any population induced by uh, non adiabaticity or dissipation. Then the qubit evolution uh, becomes highly non adiabatic and end up with a state that is close to the initial eigenstate. Therefore, the, this non gain gain loss uh, effect results in a chiral state transfer for two encircling directions. The Riemann structure near the exception point provides more than just a state transfer. And its topology also leads to interesting uh, observation of geometric phase. Now let's, for the time being, uh, forget about the gain loss induced chiral behavior and assume that uh, the evolution is adiabatic. For the counterclockwise encircling direction, so one encirclement uh, will transfer the eigenstate uh, sinus minus to the eigenstate sinus plus. And uh, a second encirclement uh, will transfer sinus uh, plus back to sinus minus, but with an additional geometric phase. So similar observation also applies to the clockwise uh, encircling direction. Uh, this is very different from the Hermitian scenario. For the Hermitian limit, that means uh, in the absence of the gamma e, uh, the Hamiltonian has a Hermitian degeneracy uh, at the arranging point of the parameter space. Given an initial state sinus minus, one encirclement of this uh, degeneracy point uh, will return the state, the qubit state, back to the initial eigenstate with a pi geometric phase. To experimentally uh, characterize this uh, accumulated geometric phase, uh, in experiments, we introduce a fourth energy level, H state, as a quantum phase reference. So this is the power sequence for the phase measurement experiment. So we first prepare a superposition of the, uh, the state sinus minus and uh, the, H, the, the reference state uh, H state. To do so, we first uh, apply a pi pulse to bring uh, to transfer all the population from ground state to excited state, and then another pi pulse to transfer all the population to F state, followed by a pi over two pulse uh, to create uh, an equal superposition of uh, equal superposition state between H and F, and then a pi over two rotation in the EF submanifold without in the superposition of sinus minus and the H state. So after the initial state preparation, we vary the uh, Hamiltonian parameters uh, J and uh, delta uh, to encircle an exception point uh, with a duration time 800 nanoseconds. The final state after encircling rho f uh, in general is a mixed state. So it consists of a superpo superposition of edge state with either sinus minus or sinus plus. So here C represents the population of each superposition and a chi uh, represents the accumulated phase. After the encircling uh, loop, we apply a pi over two pulse uh, in the EF submanifold to rotate either psi minus or psi plus to the F state. And finally, a pi over two rotation on the F and H submanifold complete a Ramsey measurement. So by sweeping the, uh, by sweeping the phase of the final pi over two pulse uh, between zero and two pi, uh, we observe this interference pattern, which provide us the accumulated uh, phase and uh, also the contrast C. So there are four 
possibilities for this experiment. For each encircling direction, we can interference either sinus minus or sinus plus with, with the edge state. So we, in our experiments, we do the best measurement for all the four possibilities. Since the Hamiltonian parameters are uh, tuned in real time, so in, con in addition to the geometric phase, the quantum state will also acquire a dynamic phase. Okay, in this uh, measurement, we also, very, uh, we also change the uh, loop parameter GME while fixed the GMX and the delta zero. So these are the uh, results of the phase measurement uh, for sinus minus to sinus minus state and on the both in circling direction. The, uh, the accumulated phase uh, has a, a very strong dependence on the GMA value. So this indicates that uh, the total quantum phase uh, is the sum of a dynamic phase uh, and uh, geometric phase. However, however, for another two situations, uh, where the sinus minus, uh, psi minus to uh, psi plus on the both in circling directions, uh, the state transport follows the uh, Riemann surface. Uh, therefore, we can expect that uh, the, the, dy the dynamical phase uh, is canceled since the quantum state uh, spends an uh, equal amount of time in either of the energy eigenstates. And the total phase is then uh, relatively uh, less sensitive uh, to the GME values. And here we can observe a pi phase difference between the two encircling directions. I would, I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, the state transfer when uh, in circling exciting points. The strong dissipation nature of the, our non hermitian qubit will limit uh, the total error, total error losing time. So that means we cannot encircle the exciting point uh, with a very long duration. But what we can do is to tune the Hamiltonian parameters to encircle the exciting point really fast. So in this experiment, we also vary the, uh, the parameter GME. And for each GME value, we vary the duration between zero and two microseconds. And now we only focus on the final state after one full encirclement and measure the psi minus state population. So these two plots uh, are the results for the two encircling directions. And the parameter regime uh, with the red color uh, correspond to uh, a state transfer behavior. So one interesting observation uh, is that, so for this counterclockwise uh, direction, the state transfer behavior can be obtained for a very broad uh, parameter regime, even at a very short encircling time. Uh, this observation can hardly be uh, explained by the Riemann structure uh, with uh, exceptional point. Uh, since the evolution is fast and the parameter pass uh, go also goes beyond the goes beyond just the encircling one exact point. So we notice that since the encircling takes uh, close the loop in the parameter space, uh, and the Hamiltonian has a time periodic structure, or we say the flow case structure. So we can calculate uh, we can calculate the non-unitary a uh, time evolution operator for one period, and also the time uh, independent uh, non Hermitian flow K Hamiltonian HF. We then calculate the overlap between the, the two eigenstates of the flow K non Hermitian Hamiltonian uh, in the same parameter regime as our experiments. So here is a dark color regime represents high non-orthogonality and the uh, proximity to the flow K exception point. And uh, surprisingly, this high non-orthogonal parameter regime qualitatively fit with the regime where we observe state transfer in our experiments. So this observation as a flavor of flow K physics in our exception point in circling study. 
next I'm going to switch uh, switch my gear to discuss uh, non Hamiltonian physics uh, that beyond the Hamiltonian formalism, and instead is based on a Louis Willing superoperator. So we come back to this uh, uh, example of uh, a driven dissipative qubit, and post selecting the uh, quantum jumps uh, play a critical role and uh, will lead to this non Hermitian Hamiltonian. <laughs> However, in practice, uh, the efficiency of post selection uh, is finite can, and uh, cannot be like 100% since usually there are multiple dissipation channels for a quantum system. And this remaining quantum jumps uh, will mix the qubit state and lead to decoherence and uh, significantly change the qubit, non hermitian qubit dynamics. To deal with uh, this uh, situation, uh, we introduce a post-selection uh, efficiency parameter eta uh, in the linear blood equation. So, and this full dynamics uh, is uh, captured by a super operator L. So, uh, just uh, like uh, just as an operator uh, x on vectors to generate a new vector. And this uh, super operator will act on operators to generate a new operator. Uh, this super operator in general is non Hermitian too, uh, can, and uh, therefore can also uh, uh, exhibit uh, exceptional point. Uh, depending on the uh, post selection uh, efficiency, uh, there are three different uh, scenarios. So when there is a perfect post selection uh, corresponding to uh, eta is uh, zero, uh, the dynamics is described by uh, effective non Hermitian Hamiltonian. This scenario can also apply to uh, the classical dissipative system, since in the semi-classical limit, the quantum jumps can be neglected, that is equivalent to this situation, to the first situation. So therefore, a dissipative uh, classical system can be described by effective non Hermitian Hamiltonian. Uh, the, the second scenario deals with a uh, finite uh, detection efficiency. Uh, finite uh, post selection efficiency between zero and one. Uh, since the super operator uh, in this scenario uh, describes, uh, uh, describes uh, uh, like uh, an evolution that is not test preserving. So here we adopt the term terminology hybrid revealing uh, follow this uh, theoretical proposal. And uh, the third scenario uh, will uh, deal with the, uh, no post selection case. Uh, therefore, it just uh, studies the exception point of a revealing super operator. Uh, our studies, uh, our non-commission studies uh, involve uh, each of uh, these three scenarios. Uh, for example, in our, uh, for example, uh, in this work, uh, uh, in our non qubit, qubit, uh, although we can uh, post-select the quantum jumps from the excited state, but for the F-state quantum jumps within the non qubit, qubit, uh, we cannot post-select them. So yeah, this will uh, this will be in the regime of the finite post selection uh, efficiency. And uh, this work uh, uh, investigates the rule of quantum jumps in the non Hermitian dynamics. And uh, due to the limited time in the following of uh, my talk, I will focus on the uh, the third scenario, that is the exception point uh, of a uh, Louis Willing super operator. Uh, two uh, jump, operator, uh, jump operators are uh, used in this uh, linear blood equation uh, to describe the dissipations of spontaneous emission uh, at rate gamma e and uh, uh, pure depressing at rate gamma phi. Uh, to calculate the eigenvalues of the Louis Willing super operator, we need to uh, represent uh, the Louis Willing in a matrix form. And uh, for Hilbert space uh, with dimension two, the Louis view space has a dimension uh, two square, that is four. So this Louis Willing is represented by this uh, four by four non Hermitian matrix. And this figure shows the real and the imaginary parts of the Louis Willing eigenvalues. Uh, one of the eigenvalue uh, given by this uh, green curve uh, is zero. Uh, it corresponds to the steady state. 
And for the other non-zero eigenvalues, uh, that determine the transient dynamics uh, to the steady state. Uh, the two eigenvalues given by this uh, red and the blue curves uh, carry with a second order uh, exception point. Uh, to have more physical intuition of this revealing second point, uh, we can uh, recast the Linda Blood equation into a block equation for the ex expectation values of full poly metrics. Uh, for the zero detuning case, uh, we can see that uh, the Y and the Z component are coupled by uh, the drive J. And the Z component uh, has a loss of uh, uh, excitation or energy. And the y, y component uh, has a loss of coherence from uh, both uh, spontaneous emission and uh, pure defect. A revealing exception point exists when these two components uh, have lost contrast. To observe this uh, revealing exception point, uh, we prepare our qubit at the excited state and then apply a microwave drive for three microseconds, followed by a readout pulse. As we vary the drive uh, amplitude J, the population evolution of the excited state uh, has a transition from exponential decay uh, to exponentially damped oscillation. So this figure gives uh, two, two examples uh, at two different J values uh, below and above the Louisville exception point. Uh, this evolution results are fitted by a uh, decaying sine wave, and uh, both the oscillation frequency and the decay rate uh, show a transition. So in, uh, this transition indicates the occurrence of Louisville exception point. Uh, one classical analog uh, of the Louisville exception point uh, can be found in the motion of a damped harmonic oscillator. So depending on the uh, damping rate, uh, its motion can have two regimes uh, corresponding to the over damping regime and the under damping regime. An exception point marks the transition between the two regimes, that is critical damping. Uh, given this observation of uh, Louis Valley exception point, uh, one direct idea for us is uh, to examine uh, what happens if we encircle this exception point. Compared to the Compared to encircle the Hamiltonian exception points, one immediate immediate difference I want to point out is that so here we are not we are not just encircle one exception point. For the non-zero detuning, uh, for non-zero detunings, uh, the Louisvillian superoperator uh, exhibits uh, second order uh, exception lines and the third order exception points. Uh, uh, like this, this, uh, all this forming a very small revealing EP structure. Uh, as you can see, this uh, EP structure uh, along the detuning direction uh, has a width about uh, 0.1 megahertz, which is much, much smaller than, uh, much, much smaller than the typical detuning values, 5 megahertz, in our uh, EP encircling studies. The parameter pass uh, here is similar to the previous uh, Hamiltonian EP encircling. And we first choose uh, the initial state at plus x, and the encircling direction is uh, counterclockwise. Uh, here are the tomography results uh, along the parameter pass. Uh, the, solid result, the solid curves are the experimental results, and uh, the dashed curves are calculated from the Linda Blood equation. So after one encirclement, uh, the qubit state is transferred from uh, uh, is transferred from plus x to a state close to minus x. Uh, we can still take advantage of uh, the Riemann uh, structure of uh, the effective non hermitian Hamiltonian to understand this uh, state transfer, since the Linda Blood uh, equation can be interpreted as non hermitian Hamiltonian evolution interrupted by a randomly happened quantum jumps from excited state to the ground state. Uh, on the Riemann, here on the Riemann structure, I plot one example of uh, the trajectory. And uh, 
for this Riemann surface, the red and the blue colors uh, represent the relative uh, gain and the loss. At the beginning, there is a quantum jump, uh, which uh, makes the qubit state, but eventually the eigenstate, uh, but eventually the qubit will uh, evolve, to, evolve to the eigenstate uh, with less loss. Uh, this the bottom figure shows uh, uh, this red curves shows one thousand uh, possible trajectories, and uh, the black curve uh, is is the one uh, plotted on the Riemann surface. And the blue curve here is the average of uh, all the trajectories. So it it mostly close to our experimental observation. If we choose the encircling direction to the clockwise direction and the qubit state, uh, we end up with a state uh, that is close to plus x. And the similar observation uh, also apply to the initial state uh, with minus x. So taking together uh, all these results, uh, the message is uh, uh, the final states are independent from the initial state and they are only determined by the encircling direction. So this kind of behavior is due to that, is due to the uh, directionality of the quantum jumps that favors the uh, ground state. I want to uh, highlight a, a few aspects of encircling uh, Louis Veil exact points. So first, uh, compared to encircling uh, Hamiltonian exception points, uh, encircling Louis Veil exception points uh, show similar chiral step transfer behavior. But this protocol does not require any uh, post-selection technique. And the second is uh, the quantum state is mixed due to the decoherence. But we can optimize the driving uh, parameters of uh, driving parameters uh, to improve the purity of the final state while still maintaining the strong chi chiral behavior. For example, uh, for the same uh, parameter pass, uh, we can vary the duration time from zero to three microsecond. And uh, here are the uh, tomography results for both directions. We calculate the entropy of the uh, final states uh, to, we can use entropy to uh, quantify the purity of the final states. And we also uh, calculate the uh, trace distance between the two final states to quantify the chirality. So here is the, uh, results of chirality and uh, entropy plot. And uh, we observe uh, maximum uh, chirality uh, at, the, yeah, at the time about one, at the duration about one microsecond, uh, we can observe the maximum uh, chirality and uh, both, the, both of the final states uh, remain uh, relatively high uh, purity. Uh, so I have discussed the Louis Veiling exception points and the uh, uh, state transport when encircling them. Uh, you may say, hey, uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot of difference from your previous Hamiltonian exception points. Both are using the dissipative two levels, although one is only relying on energy loss, and this one is, uh, uh, is, uh, this one is from the interplay of uh, energy loss and uh, decoherence. Uh, to answer this, I have several arguments. Uh, but here I want to em emphasize one of them. Uh, given a Hilbert space uh, with dimension n, the corresponding Louisville space has a dimension n squared. So the larger dimension accordingly means a larger uh, size of the non hermitian matrix may result in more interesting observation. So in my last few slides, I'm going to show you that by introducing a reference uh, level, we construct a subspace uh, where the non-hermeticity is uh, purely due to decoherence. Uh, with including the F-level to form a Q-treat, and uh, the louis Villain superoperator now is uh, represented by a nine by nine uh, non-hermitian non matrix. Uh, here I highlight a two by two block here, uh, corresponding to a non-hermitian matrix that can exhibit exception points. Uh, not that uh, when uh, when using the matrix representation for the Louis Villain super operator, accordingly the density operator is uh, re represented by a vector. 
So by compare these two, uh, it's uh, easy to uh, identify that this exception point uh, actually comes from uh, the coupling between the two coherence terms, rho fd and the rho fe. The dissipation from the excited state uh, leads to the loss of, uh, uh, leads to the loss to the coherence term uh, rho fe, but not for this uh, rho, GF, uh, rho fd. The interplay uh, between uh, coupling and the decoherence results in this uh, exception point, and therefore we term it as uh, decoherence-induced exception point. These two plots shows the eigenvalues of the Louisville matrix, uh, and the two types of uh, Louisville, EP, uh, Louisville exception points can be observed. Uh, the, this, this type one uh, is discussed earlier and uh, comes from the GE manifold. And the type two uh, is purely due to the decoherence. Here I show uh, one example of uh, time evolution, uh, which shows the coupling between the two coherence terms. And for comparison, uh, uh, the evolution of the excited state population is also included. So two, uh, two characteristics uh, can be immediately seen uh, to match the, uh, the Louis Valen spectra. So why is that? Uh, the population term decays faster than the coherence term. This matches with the real part of the uh, Louis Valen spectrum. Uh, since the real part determines the decay rate, that is, this coherence uh, terms has less loss than these uh, population terms. And the second one is that uh, the population term has, a, has an oscillation frequency uh, about twice of the oscillation frequency of the coherence. And this matches with the uh, imaginary part of the Louis Valen eigenvalues, uh, which determines the oscillation frequency of the, of the, of the terms in, in a density matrix. Uh, to, to observe this uh, decoherence induced uh, exception point, uh, we initialize our circuit uh, in an equal superposition state of G and F, and then apply a, a resonant drive for to GE manifold uh, for four microseconds, uh, followed by a tomography pulse to uh, determine the coherence through GF. Uh, for larger G values, uh, we observe damped oscillation uh, while below certain threshold. Uh, the damped oscillation transit to uh, exponential decay. And uh, through curve fitting, we extract the oscillation frequency and uh, also the decay rate, uh, both of which uh, clearly indicate uh, an exception point. So I want to conclude with that. Uh, uh, decoherence uh, as a very important uh, concept in quantum physics cannot be captured by an effective non hamiltonian Hamiltonian. So this makes the Louis Valen uh, formalism uh, very useful in studying the exception points in open quantum system. And this is almost the end of my talk. So uh, in summary, I talked about uh, by post-selecting the no jump evolution, uh, we realize uh, qubit evolution governed by uh, non hamiltonian Hamiltonian. And uh, at the exception point, we observe uh, the degeneracies uh, of both the eigenvalues and the eigenstates. And by tuning the Hamiltonian parameters in real time, we dynamically encircle an exception point and observe the state transfer behavior and also the uh, ge pi geometric phase. And I further talk about the non-Hamiltonian physics uh, that goes beyond the Hamiltonian formalism and allowing us uh, to observe uh, the decoherence induced exception points. And uh, here is the merge group and uh, our uh, theoretical collaborator, Yogesh. Uh, thanks for your attention. I'm ready to uh, take questions. Thank you very much, Wei Chen. That's a really interesting talk. Um, just while people might be formulating some questions, I might just kick things off. Um, could you just say a little bit more about how the experiment uh, from an experimental point of view um, you're using a transmon qubit or is it a pair of transmon qubits coupled to a um, cavity resonator right yes so all control and interrogation is done by controlling the frequency and amplitude of the uh, applied electromagnetic field in the cavity okay 
Uh-huh. Yeah. So when do you, how do you actually interrogate the system then? In the usual way for a transmon qubit or you got some uh, special um, technique? Uh, it's just a regular. <laughs> so yeah, it's not a special transmon, so it's just a normal transmon. Right. I think it might have been back on page, what was it? A little bit earlier. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, yeah, the transmon is just the, the, uh, the, that's a regular one. And we yeah. place the transmon inside a, a three-dimensional uh, microwave cavity. Right. And the, there's, you see their frequency have like a one gigahertz frequency difference. So they are in the strong dispersive region. So this is just a regular uh, case. So right. the difference is here, so this is our cavity and uh, the transmer. So the difference here, so we place a impedance mismatch element. So we engineer the density of states that the GE transition can see. So by right. doing so, we can make the excited state super lossy. And the F right. state is, like, is, is much, much less lossy. So so yeah, so we can create a non machine Hamiltonian in this. And then you go into a unidirectional coupler, do you? Is that what the next thing is? Under uh, where you say after your impedance mismatch. Uh, this actually is just a. Uh, it's like a, we create a additional resonance for oh, the GE right. near the GE transition. Yeah, therefore oh, increase the density of states. Oh, okay. Well, that's very very. Okay, uh, I see. And then. Um, uh, so then to ask something a bit more, um, so what was the, your, what, what was the difference again, if you could clarify between the uh, Louvillian exceptional points and the mm -hmm. exceptional points associated with the non-permission dynamics that you spoke about first? Could you just clarify what that distinction is again? Uh, so, so, uh, so in, in, this, in this talk, I start uh, to talk about the both of the exception points by using the Linda Blatty equations. Yeah. So for the Hamiltonian case, we need to post-select the quantum jumps. Right. So basically, the qubit dynamics is just uh, described, by, described by a Hamiltonian. So mm -hmm. this process only has energy loss, but without any decoherence. Right. Since we just, uh, yeah, post, uh, threw away the the, 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 the dynamics with quantum jumps. So, but for the Louis Vailing case, it, it also includes the effect of uh, decoherence. Oh, so, from, yeah, from this point that of view, it's more suitable to describe the exception points uh, in an open system. That was bringing, that was, yeah, that, that leads into my other thing that I wasn't clear about. You were saying that the, is the distinction between the Hermitian and non Hermitian dynamics associated only with dissipation? Uh, or is there, sure I, or, or sure are I, there any other contributions to it? Do you know what I'm okay. asking? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure I um, fully understand your question. But yeah. uh, you started yeah, so off talking about yeah. the the uh, distinction between exceptional points associated with the Hermitian and non-Hermitian systems and said, look, one of the distinctions was based on whether or not the eigenstates became degenerate as well as the eigenvalues, if I, if I if, did I understand that correctly? Oh, okay, I want to say, so this exception point, so, so mathematic, mathematically it can only be observed in a non-Hermitian matrix. So, right. it, so in our study, it, 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 it is either observed in a non-Hermitian Hamiltonian or it is observed from a you know, non-Hermitian Louis Vailing. So in, yes, I see. in each of the cases, there is a dissipation. Right. Okay. Oh, that, that, that makes sense. Um, so when you talk about, for example, on slide 15, when you talk about the, uh, this is a characteristic of all of these systems where you vary the um, dynamics, uh, the, uh, the uh, parameters, so that you move around the, um, e the uh, energy space. Um, as, as drawn, these diagrams are always like continuous curves. But what happens if we, I mean, I guess because you're using the Limbladian approach, um, it's kind of built into the, to, to the mathematics, the, the type of analysis that, that you're doing. But in the limit of very 
a low electromagnetic field in intensities where we have to account for individual photons. Um, what happens then? I mean, can you still use a, a Limbladian approach or is that removed by removing the quantum jumps? Okay, I guess in our case, the drive is still strong, so we can yeah. still fit it as a classical field. Yeah. And when, and when you say like we like a, use very, very weak uh, microwave drive, maybe on the, on the a few photon level, mm. and then we need to see, seriously consider the quantum nature of the microwave field. Yeah. So, yeah, we, I, I don't think we have the, like a, uh, we, we cannot have a J value as easy as in the current study. Yeah. So we should treat the, treat the qubit and the drive in a full system. Right. And, and to and be interesting set up to study like the exit. <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Both uh, from experimental and from a theoretical point of view. Um, um, I was going to ask, um, so then what happens, uh, is, is the fact that you use a transform qubit, is that because you need strong coupling between the qubit and the electromagnetic field? Or, I mean, how does the coupling enter into this picture? I just didn't so catch you mean up. The, the coupling, the coupling between, between the, the electromagnetic field and the transmon qubit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so here the transmon is uh, dispersively coupled to the cavity field. So basically yeah. the rule of the cavity, yeah, the, so the, the rule of the cavity is uh, we use this cavity to perform the, uh, the, the dispersion without our transmon step, either yeah. ground step, excess, or F step. And, uh, and the second rule of the, the, this cavity, and together with our uh, impedance mismatching element, is that we can shape the density of states to engineer the dissipations. Yeah. So otherwise, the cavity field does not uh, like, uh, you know, play a strong role in the non hermitian study. Okay, right, that's interesting. Um, there's a couple of questions in the Q&A panel. Um, the first is from um, Zimin Lee, who asks, from his understanding, when the, symmetry, uh, when the system has PT symmetry, the eigenvalue should be entirely real. Uh, but why are the eigenvalues complex beyond the exceptional point in figure six and figure 14? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So here, this uh, Hamiltonian gives uh, is is the is the is the one uh, which satisfies the PT uh, PT symmetry condition. So in the unbroken regime, it kind of has the entire uh, real eigenvalues. Right. But what we have is this Hamiltonian. So it's like, a, we add, it's, it's like our system has a, has an overall background loss for this PT Hamiltonian. That's the reason why here we have a, like a back, background loss, the, the 0.25. Yeah. Okay. We can, we, can, we can do a gauge transformation, but, you know, the, and the, by doing a gauge, transform gauge transformation to, to, to get rid of this part and uh, show that this uh, effective Hamiltonian still can satisfy the, uh, the, the PT paradigm symmetry condition. Right. And then his second question was on pages 17 and 18. Um, if you could clarify what happens if you, if you uh, start the um, clockwise and counterclockwise uh, circumnavigations from J min or from delta zero. Okay, so maybe this Zeman top note. So if okay, you start maybe, from maybe, J min, yeah. for example. Maybe this uh, Riemann surface is more clear. So in our experiments, we... Oh. Okay. 
So in our experiments, we started from uh, the, uh, the GMX area. So during one in sequence, I, I want to remind you that uh, here the color, the red color means the parameter pass uh, with less loss and the blue color means the pass with more loss. So here we start from the GMX. So for each direction, it is either the less loss direction or the more loss direction. But uh, as the question asked, so if we start from the GME, for, for either direction, it has one half on the, on the less loss path and another half on the more loss path. So yeah, so, so in that case, we can expect some uh, uh, like a non-adiabatic uh, uh, behavior for both directions. It's, it would be more like uh, the the scenario of uh, yeah for this for this scenario, right? And then uh, similarly for the delta naught point the point of minimum delta on that previous graph. If you go back to the previous slide, sure. John, so then and, and is it the same? You make the same point in relation to starting from delta naught there on the left hand graph. Uh, yes. Right. Yes. So this is uh, so overall. So this uh, this evolution when you know this dynamic evolution is uh, can be understood from uh, like this Riemann uh, topological structure and the gain loss effect. So, uh, right. You should always keep the gain loss in mind. Right. Okay. Um, and then we have another question from Elisa. I hope Elisa. I'm not sure if I pronounce your name. My apologies. Uh, when he uh, when encircling um, an exceptional point, do you destroy the state and reset the experiment every time you measure the state at each time step, or is it fully continuous? Yes. The answer is yes. Uh, so, for example, uh, here we have like uh, we encircle the the exception point for. 1.5 microsecond. So we divided this 1.5 into like 50 steps. So each step is like a, a 30 nanosecond. So we right. prepare the, we initialize the transmer and uh, evolves 30, 30 nanosecond and pause the, pause the encircling and do the step without. Right. For the next sequence, we, we let the qubit evolve in 60 nanosecond and we pause the experiment and do the uh, step without, so forth and so on, and until we uh, read out, we, until we get the full uh, kind of set tomography along this uh, 1.5 uh, microsecond time evolution. Okay, that, that makes complete sense. I don't see any more questions. I might just finish the questions by asking you a, just a simple technical question. On page, th on slide 32, what are the typical magnitudes of um, C there, the trace of... Um, are they close to one or what, what happens there? Slide 32, yeah. Ah, no, I'm, maybe it was the previous slide or the next slide. It's around there somewhere. No, I think it might be a bit later. Next, next, keep going. There, there on slide 30, yeah, there we go. So I'm going by the slide numbers on the thing. So back one slide, please, uh, Michelle. Yeah, there, so the value of C there, the trace, of the square root of the of the product of the adjoint and the thing. What's the what's the typical magnitude for C there? Is it is it close to half? Is the trace of that thing close to unity, or what? What's the typical? Okay, so here we want to that's use the, this, that's the uh, chirality, isn't it? Yeah, we want to use the uh, the trace distance trace distance between the two final states to characterize yeah. the chirality. Yeah. It's a value between zero and one. So one means the, so one is what we desire. And yeah, so zero means yeah. it goes to completely mix the state. Okay. What we don't desire, yeah. So I just want to go, oh, I see. So it gets up to a little bit over 0. 0.8, you're saying, on the right-hand graph. Yeah. The chirality is the blue, blue uh, line. Chirality oh, no, is, the chirality uh, is the black line. Okay. Black Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, yeah. so around yeah. the duration one microsecond, the chirality reaches to the uh, maximum. Yeah. 
and still we have like a, a relative good amount of purity for both of the good, right? They're still greater than 0.08, so it's still pretty good. And what was the dash line there? Ah, that's a theory two calculations. Oh, that's a theoretical calculation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, that's really, really interesting. I don't see any other questions. Um, so uh, I would, would remind everybody, thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much to our speaker. It was a really, really interesting talk. Given a lot of food for thought. I'm going to have to go and watch the video again myself. And if anyone else would like to watch the video again, um, I just remind you that it'll be available on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Murray's given a link to that in the, um, in the invitation for this talk. Um, so once again, thank you everybody for attending and thank you very much for your time. Excellent talk. Thank you. Thanks, mate. <clears throat>